out. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh my god. Are you ready? Yeah, let me uh, yeah, I just want to copy the link and share that. Sorry, let me just All right, we're going in. That. Okay. It it did listen, yo. I was <laughs> vexing. I'm like, who are these people? Who told you people that this thing is yeah, right, yeah. Going in. Okay. Okay. So is this orientation okay or should I turn it the other way? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, it's good morning to you and welcome to the Smooth Book Review Show. The dial is smooth, the 98.1 Love Music, Love Life. Good morning and welcome to the show. How are you doing? My name is Judith Ativi. Good morning to you. It's six minutes gone past 10 a.m. At, um, it's quite late today, but uh, yeah, some technical difficulties behind the scenes there, but we kind of sorted ourselves out. Today, as always, some smooth book reviews, too, if you're just joining us, what we do is we review literature, you know, books, literature, poet, uh, prose, poetry, short stories, drama, everything in between. And today we're going to be reviewing a book, all right? But joining me live on YouTube, because we're streaming live today, my core reviewer is just myself and her. It's, of course, the very lovely Oyinda. She joins me live today on Zoom. Hey, Oyinda, good morning. Hi, Jesus. Good morning. How are you doing good. today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. All right, so we're excited to do this today. You can join us and go stream us live. We're on YouTube right now. It's www.youtube.com forward slash smooth 981FM. So go on there to catch us live. We're reviewing the book. It's called uh, The Love in Color. It's called Love in Color, okay? Mystical Tales from Around the World Retold. It's written by Bolu Babalola. It's a collection of short stories, a collection of 13 short stories. And uh, we're going to be reviewing the book today, Bolu uh, Babalola. Bolu Babalola is a uh, she's a, she's an author and uh, this is her first novel, her first book, her first debut book. It's a collection of short stories, and we're going to be doing it today. If you have read the book, I'm sure everyone has. It was released last year. It was released. Uh, oh God, I've been so, you know, I lost you. If you can make a return, it would be very nice. But anyway, uh, this book was published in uh, February. 2020 was first uh, published in February 2020. It's quite a good looking book. It's called Love in Colors. It's mystical tales from around the world retold and it's by Bolu Babalola. Okay, so uh, 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 we're going to get into it real quickly, but I see that, uh, uh, do we have time? Yes, we do. Now it's a, it's a, it's a romance book. Okay, it's all about love tales from around the world retold uh, reimagined and retold uh, mystical tales. So think about all the mystical tales that you can remember, every single one of them. Um, there are some that I, I honestly didn't know about until I picked up this book and I read them, all right? But it's retold and into contemporary times, reimagined and told, and it's quite the collection. And to join me to do that today is Oyinda. You can find her on Instagram. She's at Oyinda Loves Books on Instagram. So go on there. She has quite she has quite the reels you know <laughs> she has quite she has quite the reels so go on to instagram and follow her on there but i mean that hey um we are almost uh, let's see if we can go on a short break and when we come back we're going to get into the nitty-gritty the plot about the book uh the writing style and everything and maybe talk about the stories as well there are many stories inside this books some that you might not even know about but let's take a very quick break at this point and when we come back on the other side we'll get right into it this is a smooth book review my name is judith at tv my guest is oyinda she joins me live on youtube we're streaming live right now so go check us out stay with us we'll be back all right i totally forgot that we have a 10 o'clock ad uh 10 i said 10 it's a, a 10 10 minute ad, 10 minutes. Let me explain. So we have an ad that comes at 10, 10. So 10 minutes past 10. So we'll play the ad, but I'm looking to see if we have more ads. So 
just quickly play that ad and then we'll continue, okay? I can't hear you. I think you're mute. Oh, you know, you're mute. Yeah, I said, okay. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have, a, we have an ad for 25, 40. We have quite a lot of ads today. So, yeah, we're going to play all of them. All right, so when we come back in, we're going to talk about uh, just the collection of short stories all together. I think there are 13, have we? I thought I'm going to talk nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, 13. Yeah, that's 13. Three new tales. Uh... See, look, this book was a... Okay. I don't want to bash. I don't want to bash anyone, but I, I got issues with this book. I, got... I have problems with this book. Weekdays, from 6.30 a.m. Exchange for latest cover that we've discovered. The Smooth, the review, Smooth, the 98.1 Love Music, Love Life. It's 11 minutes gone past 10 a.m. on a beautiful Saturday morning here in the city of Lagos, the commercial hub of West Africa. My name is Judith TV, and this is a Smooth Book Review Show. We're well, inside our second half of our show today. My guest is joining me. She joins me live today on YouTube. You can check Ket well, catch us live on there. It's www.youtube.com forward slash smooth 981FM. Uh, my guest is Oyinda, all right? She's on Instagram at Oyinda uh, Loves Books. Join us inside the studio today as we review the book Love in Color, Mystical Tales from Around the World Retold. And it's by Bolu Babalola. It was first published in February 2020. Uh, it's uh, quite the collection of stories, a collection of short stories, 13 stories all put together. If you have comments today about the book we're reviewing today, please go ahead and do so and send us your comments on to 0809 0981 Again, 0809 Oh, you know, I'm going to let you, you know, kick things off and tell us a bit about the short stories, like the collection of short stories, what the plot was about and everything, because... Um, yeah, Love in Color is a series of short stories that are basically retellings. And for people who are not familiar with what retellings are, retellings are basically an author taking a classic story or anything in history that already has like a certain plot and just turning it on its head, either by, mm -hmm. either by gender reversal or just changing some basic things of the plot and like creating their own story of the backbone of an already existing and most times well-loved story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's such an interesting take. Um, and I'm, I must give her a plus on this because um, not often, I mean, I mean, of course we retell stories, but I wanted to see more with this retelling. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I really wanted to see more with this retelling, but hey, but keep going. I feel like in this in this, uh, in this short story collection, she did more with the new tales than with the old tales. Mm. I love that she was very diverse with the with the old tales that she picked. I mean, we have stories from Nigeria, stories from Ghana, stories from all over Africa. We have stories from uh, different Asian cultures. We have uh, stories from I think there's one from Arabian culture. That's um, mm -hmm. one and one night. Yes. There's, Roman mythology, there's Greek mythology, and there's you know different parts of just African culture and mythology. Anywhere love is, she she got inspiration from there. So I love the diversity. But then I feel like because I have out of the three uh, new tales, two of them were my absolute favorites. So I feel like she she was she was better with the new tales than with the old tales. And I found myself struggling to get into this book at the beginning because the she started with the um. 
with the old tales and then the, the new tales closed out the book. So I started and I was reading Oshu and I couldn't get into it. I went to Shahrazad, I couldn't get into it. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening? Because this was a collection that I was really, really excited to read. I first listen. saw it. Listen, oh, listen. <laughs> I was too excited. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it was. Okay, so um, I was talking to Amin and I was telling her that, I mean, I am so sorry, but this is hard. I, I don't know what happened. And she's like, is, is, could it be bad timing? I was like, no, it's not bad timing because I love romance, okay? And I mean, we, everyone loves loves. I mean, who doesn't love love? We love romance. And, you know, when you read the foreword and, and the author's notes about, you know, what inspired her to write this book, she was very much, you know, she talked about love and how she's a love person. And, you know, and, and I felt, oh, this could be a kindred spirit, you know, let's get into it. Let's hear those love stories. And of course, like you said, you know, the first 10 stories are based off folk tales and, you know, mythologies, uh, ancient oral, you know, traditions from West, North and even Southern, Af uh, Southern Africa, Middle East, as well as, you know, China and Greece. But it was it was hard to get into. I'm sorry. It was so hard. And I want to say maybe because I maybe I, I don't know most of maybe some of the tales that she tried to retell, if, if that makes any sense, but yeah, I think the only one I liked was Oshun. I'm sorry. I mean, I think you're frozen there. But you know, you're there. Oh, I lost her again. Uh, this is still the Smooth Book Review Show. My name is Judith at TV, and we are reviewing the book uh, uh, Love in Colors by uh, Bolu Babalola. It's uh, mystical tales from around the world retold. It's a collection of 13 short stories uh, that are retold uh, from original folk tales uh, and uh, mystical tales, ancient oral stories or traditions from West, North, East, Western, and uh, oh, yeah, I lost it there, and the Middle East, and of course, China and Greece. Now there, and also, but the last two stories, the last three stories were also original. So the collection of uh, 13 stories, the first half of the book, which is uh, 10 stories, the first 10 stories were based off folk tales, uh, myth uh, mythologies, and ancient oral traditions uh, from West, North, and, and South Africa. We also saw a bit of our story as well uh, with Oshun, and also some from Ghana with, yeah, she, uh, let's go through some of the uh, short stories there, uh, a bit of them. So there was Oshun, there was, uh, yeah, there was Sia, there was also Nefriti, uh, Ori, and there's Tiara, there's also uh, Olago Meiji, quite a number of uh, Atam, I think she's back. Let's see if I can add her on there. Hello. All right, are you back now? <laughs> are you? Sorry, I can't Wow, I, I don't know what's wrong with the network today. I don't know, maybe because of the weather, because I, there's one thing I know for certain is that the weather is always an issue. But has it, yeah, so you were saying before we lost you there. Yeah, I said I just, uh, she really showed, like, she really showed expertise with the new tales. Like, she showed expertise with the old tales as well, but I just found, my, I just found myself liking the, new tales better and finding it hard to get into the first set of uh, um, old tales. I kept skipping story after story. And after a while, I said, okay, I'll just go and start from the back. Mm. And I ended up reading the old, uh, the new tales first, then going back to the new tales. And I kept, because I was the one, I was a major promoter of this book, even before reading it. I found it on NetGalley. And I saw the cover and I saw that it was a Yoruba author. And I was like, you know what? I, I want to read this book. And I read the blurb and everything. And I was like, this is a book I definitely want to read. And I was mm. hyping it. And it was available to order. I ordered my copy. Like, I was even going to order a, a hardcover copy. But that was, um, what's it called? That was sold out. So I just had mm -hmm. to get this. And I was like, oh, my God, this is a book I definitely want to read. But I was reading other things at the time. So I said, let me hold on. Only for me to start and... It was not flowing. I was not vibing with it. I was like, this, this can't be happening to me. This is something that I have anticipated for months. What is happening? And mm. I just told myself, time to cut my losses. And I'll just drop this book and not finish it. And then people, other people on Instagram who had read it at that time were like, 
oh no no don't give up it gets better it gets better it gets better but after a while there were some stories i just knew i wouldn't be able to read so i had to get the audio book the audio book i feel like the narration really carried the stories Oh, Inda, I'm, I'm losing you they there. It really I'm... helps me get into the vibe of the stories, and after that, I was able to. I couldn't. I couldn't get back. I couldn't get past it because. Hello, Inda, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear now. <laughs> you were you were like uh, cracking for a bit, but I think I got what you said. You said you couldn't get past the old stories, and so you had to go through the audio book so you could at least enjoy yeah. the last bit of the story. Now, but one thing that was really interesting by what you said, and I, I think that she's she's not Bully's not a bad writer, right? I mean, the last three stories is quite a, a significant. The fact that she's not a bad writer, and even the language that's used in the book and everything. So it's not necessarily that the stories were bad or it was written badly, because the last three stories were proof that she's actually a good writer. And I look forward to seeing. Yeah, and, and I, you were going to say something. You you wanted to add something to it. Yeah, like I said, she was she, she really showed her uh, range and originality. Mm, mm. But uh, unfortunately, and I, and I think the reason, I'm, and, and I want to know, why was the first 10 stories really difficult for us to get through? And I think maybe because of the repetition of how the stories were, because they all had female leads, they all, you know, she explored all kinds of love. But I think there's a lot of nuances to explore in such, if you're discussing such kind of love, you know, platonic love or, you know, whatever love she's trying to explore there. But there are many of the stories that felt almost rushed. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's romance. It's so nuanced that it's like, yeah, I don't, I mean, oh, you know, help me here. Try to clarify my thought. Yeah, do you feel the same way that I do? I can't fault uh, short stories for being rushed because at the end of the day, they are short stories. So they're like mm. bite-sized, they're such a, just like we have Sanchez Water, they are such a novels. <laughs> so you can't force them, you can't fault them. I feel like the power of a short story, like I think I mentioned it when we discussed dreams and assorted nightmares, the power of a short story lies in you being able to invest in the characters from very mm. early on. But in Oshu's story, the first, I kept seeing people saying, oh my God, Oshu is my favorite story. I could not relate. I did, even with the right? audio and everything, I, I did loved, not like I loved Oshu so much. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could not like, I could not get into Oshu. Maybe some other time I will read it and love it as much as everyone does. But I could not get into Oshu. I, I, I found, I, I was reading it and I just loved it. I could not get into it after. So wow. I, I, I could not connect with the characters in Osho. I could not con connect with the characters in, uh, was it Psyche? Yeah, Psyche was the one trying Psyche to was yeah, so like it yeah. felt like it felt it felt like uh, Devil Wears Prada. It felt it felt yeah. like very it, it, like, Psyche was like, it's not me. I'm sorry. I tried so much with Psyche. I just couldn't do it. See, I felt oh god, oh my god, I'm this. <laughs> which which is Okay, but which stories were your favorite, though? I really liked, yeah, my favorite stories, uh, Tiara, Alagomeji. I loved Alagomeji so much. And then you I see, was just the later feeling, stories. When I finished uh, Alagomeji, then I realized she was telling her parents' love story. I had, even talking about it now, I have goosebumps. <laughs> Alagomeji is for gosh. It was, I just love how she, how, she, oh my, it was like she was there growing up with her parents. It was just so beautiful and perfectly written. Like, Alago Meji was the redemption point of this whole book for me. Mm. After I read Alago Meji, I was like, this is going to work out. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I loved it so much. Then I loved um, this bay. I love how we got uh, multiple, I think we got, was it this bay that gave us dual perspectives of the love interest? We got the perspective of the guy and the mm -hmm. perspective of the girl. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really enjoyed Nefertiti, Ya, and Shehrazad. So those were those were my favorite story um, stories from the collection. I just oh. feel like those. Were
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we're going to take a very quick break here. When we come back on the other side, I'm going to talk about, uh, about some of the best selling things about this book. Besides the book being a very good looking book, um, and there's so much more inside that um, she also did talk about. But stay with us, we'll be back. This is a smooth book review show, don't go anywhere. Our network is really, really bad today. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. Just, just keeps cutting. I don't know. It was the rain because I, I, I had like two Zoom meetings yesterday. It wasn't this bad? Maybe it's the rain. Like I said, I said whenever the weather is bad, it's always affecting the the kidney. Speaking of, um, so when we come back, I think we'll talk about. I mean, I love the concept. Representation, you know, in retelling stories. Let's talk about representation. In retelling stories, I understand the originality yeah. thing that, you know, was very binary in some sense. But I mean, when you retell stories, you want to make it inclusive. You know, do you think you should have done more? Yeah, yeah we're going to ask. I feel like, are you going back on? I feel she actually did a lot because we got like different types of representation. We got Asian, we got Arab. Yeah, no, we got, no, uh, wait, we're winning now. Wait, wait, wait. We're not over. I'm going in now. Just hang on. Smooth, 98.1, love music, love life. You're welcome back. This is the Smooth Book Review Show. My name is Jennifer TV, 26 minutes gone past uh, 10 a.m. It's uh, kind of wet, kind of beautiful, kind of cloudy Saturday morning here in the city of Lagos, West Africa. It's a commercial hub of West Africa. We are live, coming to you live from Nigeria. You can you can stream us live or on YouTube. It's www.youtube.com forward slash smooth 981 FM. Go on there and stream us on live. We're reviewing the book, Love in Color, Mystical Tales from Around the world retold and it's by Bolu Babalola. Joining me live to review the book today is Oyinda. You can find her on Instagram. She's at Oyinda. She's at Oyinda Loves Books. That's where you can find her. Oyinda Loves Books. Send us a WhatsApp message and join the conversation today on our WhatsApp platform. The number is 0809-444-0981. Again, 0809-444-0981 to join the show. You can also call in live if you want on 0144-8981. Again, 0144-8981. Before I picked up this book, Oyinda, I was told that, you know, there were the tea. It didn't give what I wanted it to give. I don't know, but I mean, the thing that was promised by all the hype that was created around this book, I wanted it to give, but it didn't give what it was supposed to give. Huh. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, talking about representation and, and retelling stories, I, I, I read a lot of arguments online where people were, I know some readers were saying that, um, you know, with retelling stories, it, it didn't seem sort of inclusive in terms of people, you know, they wanted to see more of the LGBTQ plus community, especially in the first half of the book. What are your thoughts to that, to that you know, narrative? Okay, well, that well, that is that is very valid because you know we were just out of thirteen stories. We only had one story with a uh, female female romance, and every other romance was um, was um, female male. So I feel like that is that is a very uh, valid. Um, <laughs> point of conversation because we didn't have we didn't have we had little to no um lgbtq plus rep in this book and in a book that you know is uh that claims to show off love Can, are you are you there are you here yeah i'm here i'm here loud and clear i can hear you 
So uh, it enabled that claims to show off love in its various forms and celebrating different types of love. It did not like do enough in terms of representation when it comes to LGBTQ+. But when it comes to um, racial identity and like physical different, like showing off different types of bodies and uh, physical appearances, I feel like she did, she, she, she delivered on that front because in Naleli, there's a, there's a character that uh, has, um, oh my God, what's the name of this? Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember this thing we need has. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Vertiligo. Yeah, Vertiligo. She's a teen character with Vertiligo and that is in uh, Naleli. So mm. that's the um, story on page 157. Uh, I like that as well, that we have Asian characters, we have Middle Eastern characters, we have African characters, we have Greek characters. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so I feel like she's, she, she tried as much as possible to get uh, geographically diverse characters, but then not enough LGBTQ plus characters in a book that, you know, showcases love in different forms. I would have loved to see a male-male romance and other um, identities apart from CIS identities, maybe trans uh, romance or non-binary characters, but I don't, we didn't get that in this book mm, at all. Mm, mm. Uh, another thing that is, uh, I don't know, if you are, do you think as a romantic, if you're like a huge on romantic romance, because I mean, I, th I thought I was a big romance fan. OK, I thought I was until I was like, I don't know, this isn't working. Do you think, you know, heavy romance folks who are into romance will fall for this book? Yes, I do, because I also thought I was <laughs> heavily into romance till I started like reading again. And I could not, I, 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 romance was not even on my top 10 list of most read genres because I just read it by the side or like, I don't read it like main, main, my main genres. I just love to read it once in a while. I don't find myself loving romance as much as I used to. But then, you know, people who have reviewed this book, who are like head over heels in love with it are mostly romance buffs and even people who don't even read romance who's like okay this is the only romance book i read in 2020 and then they absolutely loved it and then people who read romance every day absolutely love this so i feel like this book is usually like it's just, it doesn't it just depends on you who's reading mm. it it doesn't depend on because i <laughs> I was ready to love this book, honestly. And I feel like what made me not DNF it was that I already, like I was really, I, I've been invested in the book before the release. And then I had a lot of people telling me it gets better, it gets better. And while I, I like I said, Alago Meji was what redeemed it for me. Alago Meji was just so beautiful. I feel like if everyone, if you even want to read, okay, I want to read this book, which story should I start with? start with Alago Meiji and that will give you the fire to just keep on keeping on for the rest of the book because I'm I you. It wasn't I didn't like Oshun at all I just I, I think another way to even get through the book is one story a day just just speak out one story a day and you can gonna get you're going to get through with it real quickly for three months I think I bought it in October I read this book for three months and I finished I, it like December I could not, I was doing the one story a day thing, but I couldn't even get through the story. So I'll just drop it, I'll pick it up that week. So it was, for me, it was one story a week. I could, I just, <laughs> Speaking about um, the stories, do you think one of the reasons why is, I, I think to me it was sort of a sameness, you know, especially with the first 10 stories, there was a kind of, uh, uh, should I say a trajectory that the stories were all going, you know, and then I felt like there was the sameness. I think that is that was was that a problem for you as well? Was that the reason why you didn't want to stop? You know, you wanted to stop reading. At some point, the stories became I was I would say predictable because I don't like when people say romance novels are predictable because at the end of the day, you know, you are heading towards a happily ever after. But mm -hmm. then with this one felt like especially with Nefertiti. Nefertiti is one of my favorite stories. But then at one point when things started, you know, escalating, I was like, you know what? What is the point of all this? Because you guys are going to end up happily ever after in the end. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> because of what is <laughs> I mean it's not even just a happily ever after. 
uh, excuse me it's not really about the happily ever after really and i think that's what you talked what, what you said you know that's what you alluded to in the beginning about short stories you know it doesn't give room for development and nuances and when you're retelling stories such as this you need a lot of nuance you know to kind of explore what you're saying because many of the stories just well there was a there was some kind of graduation that you see in all of the stories you know it, it's some type of tra trajectory and then towards the end it's the same thing you know a lead girl who's strong you know and she doesn't exactly she's doing a thing and then a man comes and there's not really too much and i'm gonna fall in you know and, and that's that's it like i don't want more now what's happening oh <laughs> That is also why Shaharazad ended up being one of my favorite stories because I felt like I knew where Shaharazad was going and then that mm. was the only one that did not have that. So the ending really just, I really liked that ending and that's what made it one of my favorites because when I was reading it, I, could, I was like, you know what, this is going to end up this way. So let me just skip to the next one. Then I listened on audio and it was like, it did not end up like that. So I just, I really, really ended up loving <laughs> Shaharazad. <laughs> yeah, I, I did like that one too. Uh, what about yeah? Okay, let's let's really go into in depth into the stories, right? Um, I, I I liked Oshun. I don't know why I didn't like Oshun. I liked Oshun. I liked the idea of them being in high school. It felt like um, X Men. The X wasn't it? Was the school the school of gifted minds? I forgotten that uh, Professor X's uh, Xavier's uh, school yeah. for the gifted minds. Right. And it felt like that, you know, them with all their powers and, you know, that whole, how do you put it, you know, um, it felt a bit like that. Right. And I liked it because then you can, you know, you never thought of them being in school. There's also her relationship with her sister. I felt like that story was well developed in terms of characters, you know, and setting and, you know, plot. I, I liked that story. But what was your issue with Oshun? Tell me, say for your full cheers. So now that you mentioned, Oshun did not leave an impact on me. Yeah. I feel like the amount, the amount of effort it took me to get through the story didn't let it leave any impact on me. Now that you're um, mentioning the school, is when it's just clicking in my head that, oh, that was a high school setting. If you if you ask me what happened in Oshun, she was just dancing, and then someone fell in love. <laughs> because I feel like Emphasis was placed on the dancing. She was yeah. dancing and she wanted Shongo. What about Shongo and his other side chicks? Uh uh. <laughs> it just felt so dramatic and she wanted him to, she wanted to be the main chick and the only chick. And I'm sorry, but I couldn't. I she, she wanted to. I think she just, she, she kind of condoned him. Is you know is is always is always is is straying if that makes any sense. She kind of condoned it because she felt like you know it was looking for pieces of her in other people. You know, I think that's what it, that's what it felt like. I kept I kept questioning. I was like, okay, maybe I'll just leave it because it's a retelling. But then I, I kept wondering, is Oya the same person as Oshun? Because I know it's always Shongo and Oya. So why is it Oshun that it's been used in his brother? Okay, it's a retelling. So let's just let me just <laughs> let it slide. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Well, well, okay, so, and there's, there's Yeah, okay, which is, of course, the story uh, from Ghana, uh, a girl named Yeah and a, and a partner, Kofi, who were destined to fall, to be married and to be together forever. I really you like liked that story. Why? I liked Why? Yeah. I don't know. Why? There was something about just uh, letting go of those family expectations and, you know, following... <laughs> Oh my, my, my teeth here because I don't know what, what that was about. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Oh my god, not the hiss. Why <laughs> did you like yeah? Um, let me see. Okay, so um oh, it's no. like if you're oh, that it, again. Oh, uh, right, let me see if I can stop my video and then see if you can. Um, are you there, Rina? Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay. I, I said, why I didn't like Yeah was if you were that, you know, self aware of who you were and what your mission was. And I mean, you should already be able to shake off your parents' expectations. I mean, that's like a no brainer to me. It's like, yeah, you're going about being this, you know, women's champion and, you know, revolutionizing, you know, what you wanted to do and doing impact, you know, impactful work in your community. And then there's this young man who's over there. And you feel like you're fettered to him for, for your life. Like, Girl, is you crazy or what? I mean, that's what I felt like with yeah. And then 
it just it i don't know and then you kind of accept I, again okay now maybe as i'm talking about it it's kind of it's kind of clearing in my mind you know why should be she still be with him yeah. but at a point i was yeah, like it's not <laughs> and is why are you accepting this man to go and be doing things that the way they are doing? I mean, you accept him cheating, you accept him being who he is, and it's not really love, but you're okay with it, you know. And then this guy comes along and he's a taxi driver, or and then all of a sudden all the emotions come crushing back. Really? Really? Oh my yeah, God. really? But a story that I really liked was at was Atam. Atam was such a good story. I liked that story. It was actually the one we at, the queen and her concubine. Yeah, and her and a man lover. Is that it? Yeah, I'll just concubines say concubine. of women. <laughs> concubines <laughs> of <a> women. <laughs> we're gonna take a break here. When we come back on the other side, we're going to get uh just uh writing. I think I think I'll try and see if I can take a, an excerpt from the book as well, and then we'll just round things up here. This is the Smooth Book Review Show. My name is Jennifer TV. My guest is Oyinda. She joins me live on YouTube. Go watch us live. We're streaming live on YouTube right now. Stay with us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, where do we, where do we, what excerpt do we take? Oh, uh, I think let's do um, let's do Alagomeji. Alagomeji is such a beautiful story. Okay. What part of Alagomeji do you want me to? Um. I read to the beginning, like 265 to 266. 265 to 266. I'm looking for gigs or um audiobooks gig oh okay you can get in touch with uh one read uh yeah, i know don't they know. do uh, audio books for their books of the month ah uh, okay i joined um i told my sobe books there so hopefully they're going to okay. yeah i would love i would love i would love their audio books because their books are like so amazing <laughs> I was saying, I told I was selling, oh God, I told my sobe, I was selling, I was like, oh, you guys are good, your books are good. Just I, feel get... like, I feel like they need, to, they need to do a Nigerian Ogadima audiobook because the UK Ogadima audiobook is not it at all. At least I'm going to first... take out this video and send it to O2K so it can hear you say it. They say it again for those in the back. We need to do a Nigerian Ogadima audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going in. <clears throat> Our princess grew up on Noble Street, a road on a slight incline in the heart of Lagos, hidden within a dense metropolis within a metropolis known as Yaba. In the 70s, it is a having cosmopolitan hub that beginning that's beginning to shrink in the shankless of colonialism. The old red slant roofs and Roman and Roman columns that Momo Ithad Propanes sat between the side at new concrete concussions, modern and geometrical staggering. They hollowed the rise of a new Nigeria. These concrete buildings are patriotic, loyal to their blood. They are resetting the tone and realigning the country back to its roots because of because if there's anything. Nigerians like to do is it is to shout a cool knee badger in the staggering Lagosian way that of course is all that matters that Lagos will never spoil this mantra is concentrated in Yaba for here we are in the nucleus of the nucleus the heart of the heart in the heart of the heart love is rich and in abundance the love is overwhelmingly present in an apartment at the top of, the, of a block of flats on Noble Street where our princess dwells. This is her tower, her castle. Our princess name translates from Yoruba and foils into it iteration of God loves me. 
and indeed she is cherished with a pure affection. She lives with seven family members, a doting, slightly overbearing father, whose firmness is undercut with a sure and tender and tender fondness, a sweet, soft mother, who extends her care to lost children in the neighborhood, and four siblings, two sisters and two brothers. She is the fourth born, and love is poured into her. Love gives our princess space to be herself. Her tongue is fast and sharp and holds a gravitas far beyond her years. It exposes injustice and shames her elders. Throughout her life, she will stand up for what's right, leave indelible marks of good on the world. For it is not that she's a princess who happens to live on Noble Street. She is the person who it is named for. Somehow, 20 or 30 years before her birth, God placed into the hearts of the town planners who set about to construct the street a knowledge that this particular street should be noble. Their self-proclaimed and ignorant colonialist superiority might have induced them to think that they were naming the road after some English commander or civil servant, but they were wrong. The street was named after our princess. It was named after our heart, one that is both strong with integrity and soft with kindness. Noble Street was named in honor of, our, of her tender fierceness. <clears throat> that was, <laughs> I didn't want that to stop. <laughs> you were saying something there. <laughs> I said I didn't want that to stop. I was enjoying the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's a wonderful thing about um, like I said before in the beginning, is that she's a good writer. You can tell that she's wonderful with words. She's wonderful with language. Her style is, you know, you can tell that this is her. She's she she mixes contemporary and you know the old style of writing really well. You know, it can. And I was I was reading about, about a biography, and I noticed that she's actually a marketing exec. Or she worked with marketing and advertising so you can tell that she she does writing sort of for leaving you know and she does it really well but uh, i don't know i don't know but i don't know i don't know but hey um we took that, that except was from the book it's called um it's called love in color it's by uh, it's by bolu babalola mystical tales from around the world retold it's a collection of short uh 13 short stories 10 from uh, oral tradition and, um, uh, you know, folk tales and everything from around the world, uh, all the way, I mean, think about it, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, uh, Southeast Asia, and even uh, Arab uh, Arabian culture as well, uh, from all around the Middle East, I beg your pardon, China and Greece, you know, and then the last three stories were uh, very original that she, that she added on there, really, really good. Uh, a collection of short stories but hey um again if you are a romance person if you love love okay if you're a love love um you you might love this book so go grab it it's um it's everywhere it was published last year february last year 2020 and it was, it's quite the book it's a collection of 12 short stories 13 short stories i beg your pardon miss tales from around the world it's called love in color and it's by bolu babalola like i said the quality of the writing and the use of language uh for a debut novel uh by this author is except it's absolutely stellar it's quite beautiful to say the least um but hey, um, I never got to ask you, besides the stories that you liked, uh, Uyinda, what did you like about this book as we round things up here? We have about two minutes before we leave the studio. Yeah, I love the, um, the what's it called? The diverse nature of the stories. I, I, I feel like I've said that a lot today. Mm. I love the writing. I love that the stories are from, you know, like the title says, from all over the world. I love that she didn't just speak one location. I love that she spread her wings. She tried her hands with different cultures and different characters and different types of love, uh, love, uh, different type of love, different type of, we have rekindled love. We have, you know, friends to lovers. We have uh, strangers to lovers. We have exes, exes coming back together. Mm -hmm. We have... Um, and then the amazing writing. She she really just lets your imagination run wild with the writing and her descriptiveness, really vivid and detailed. So I really love that about the book. Yeah, um, I, I mean, um, I don't want to be too harsh. You know, I was trying so hard not to be too harsh with this book because. Yeah. But that's the thing with collection of short stories, and I think we've talked about this when we did. Um, 
I saw your dreams. Yeah, it's is it a hit or a miss? And many times, you know, when you have a collection like that, it's quite difficult to find it. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that. I mean, I'm going to give her credit. And the reason why is, A, for the fact that, you know, she was able to reimagine stories and try to retell them. It's quite, you know, it's it's a stellar, a stellar idea to want to do this. So I must give her applause for that. It's not easy to do this. And, and in short stories, ah, well, you try. So well done to her for that one. Um, also, I, I mean, the it's such a beautiful book. I love the book. It's so beautiful. I love that, you know, the book aims to retell, you know, mystical tales from around the world using color. OK, that's another one. You know, she made sure that she used, you know, color inclusive people there, you know, you know, you know, black and brown people. So. So, yeah, it, there's so many things to to love about the book, you know, but um yeah, and I also want to see many, many more uh, books. Right, I'm looking forward to her second book from from her. I think next year or 2023. So I'm really looking forward to. Reading I'm looking that. forward to yeah. I'm looking forward to to reading from her this time, and you know, hopefully we get to see you know this style of writing um, that she has, and also explore you know so much more from her. Um, so I yeah, I look I look forward to her as well. Hope we'll really see her progress and you know character development and mm. Mm. Yes, I, I hope to see that as well. So, and also, by the way, it was also a nominated or it was selected for one of the uh, top uh, brutal paper, most remarkable, uh, one of the uh, 50 most remarkable African books in for 2020 it was selected as one of them uh, by brutal paper. So yeah, well done to her. Uh, it's again, the book is uh, it's called A Love in Colors, Mystical Tales from Around the World by Bolu Babalala. If you're a lover, if you love romance and love, <laughs> You can go on and grab this book and you just immerse yourself into everything love and romance. As for me, uh, it's, a, it's a wrap here. Oyinda, thank you so much for joining me today. For inviting me. Thank you. It's been, it's been wonderful to have you here. Join us. Join us next week. This time is going to be, uh, uh, we're going to have a children's author. We're going to talk to her about a debut novel. And it's going to be a, a, a debut children's book, really. It's a debut children's book. Uh, she's called Reti, uh, Ronti Akin, Akintobi. I think I got that correctly. It's Ronti Akintobi. So you want to stick around next week. It's more children's book as we kind of gravitate towards Children's Day here in Nigeria. So me, it's goodbye. Make sure to catch us next week. And also follow Oyinda on Instagram. Oyinda, please, you know, reel out your socials for us. Okay, you can follow me on Instagram at Oinda Loves Books. No underscores, no full stops, just Oinda Loves Books. Mm. And my name is Judith TV. I also love books as well, but I, but hey, I'm on Instagram <laughs> at Judith TV and on Twitter is at Judith underscore a TV as well. So go on there and follow me. It's been wonderful. Follow us on all social media platforms. We are at Smooth981 FM on Twitter, at Smooth981 on Instagram. You can catch a replay of this particular episode. It's going to be live on our YouTube. So go on there to www.youtube.com forward slash Smooth981. It's been great, guys. Good morning and goodbye. See you next week. Thank you. <laughs> All right.